welcome back to the Yarny Cave. My name is Brenda and this is BYC Crochet. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your morning, day or afternoon to hang out with me. And uh, before we get started and I show you everything that I've worked on this week, how about I read a little bit of A Year of Positive Thinking. Hmm? In case you're wondering, I got this book through Amazon, A Year of Positive Thinking. It is dated, but I just kind of jump around and skip around and sometimes open the book and wherever it lands, it lands. And this morning, uh, we're going to read You Will Always Be Okay. Ooh. You Will Always Be Okay. Being okay doesn't mean that life will be perfect, nor does it presume that everything will turn out better than before. It simply means that you will eventually make it back to a place of equilibrium because whatever you are currently experiencing or feeling is temporary. It will pass, as everything does. Even, the things turn out dif even if the things turn out differently than you expected, take some solace in knowing that you will always be okay, even if you are different than before. I like that. So different is still okay. Just because you're different now than you were 10 years ago doesn't mean that you were better before or better now. You're just different in every, you know, in every um, um, episode of our lives. We change, we morph, we grow, we mature, we learn, and that just helps us to be um, a better and okay at the moment. What's in your cup? For me, it's morning and I got coffee. It's pretty early. And I got one of those um, cake for breakfast coffee from from uh, Hobby Lobby, but I did notice that maybe it's not, it says it's microwave safe, but I put it in the microwave just a couple of times, but it's got like the finish, it's got like a crack on it. And then I nipped it right here, let me see it. I nicked it, I'm not sure if it was doing the dishes. There's another nick over here. So I'm trying to drink on the opposite side. So I want to share with you guys some things that I have done this week and uh, some finished items, some finished objects, some FOs. I also want to share with you guys that I'm a little bit closer to securing employment. I did get an offer and I did accept. However, we're still going through the process of the background check. I had to do some drug testing. Um, they're verifying my um, employment history. So, although I accepted, they offer and accepted, I'm still not working yet. Uh, God willing, if everything goes uh, just as it should, I should be reporting to work on June 5th, which is nice because it gives me a couple of weeks to um, actually babysit my mom's dog. So, my mom. Um, and my dad rented a beach house for two weeks, and normally we take turns going over there with all the kids. I have f three sisters and one brother, and we all kind of take turns going and spending time with them and being at the beach. But this year, of course, um, uh, since I'm not employed, and that's an expense really that we don't need, we decided not to go. <clears throat> so I'm watching um, my mom's uh, Yorkie instead, which is fine. And so they will be back on June 2nd, so it's perfect timing. So by the time I get to start my new job, if I get to start it on the 5th, like I said, God willing, um, my mom's dog will be gone and I'll be able to focus on getting myself um, ready for my new job. So that's what's happening. So... Um, Like I said, you know, nothing is done until it's done. Nothing is sealed until it's sealed. And I don't like to count my chickens before they hatch. So right now it's just an offer that I accept it. Not until I actually report to work on June 5th do I consider myself fully employed. So I guess doing that gives me just a sense of... Um, um, if something happens to fall through... I'm not disappointed. Maybe that's the way my brain thinks. But needless to say, I just want to put a shout out out there that um, there's some um, people who ask for some custom work to be done. My husband, um, as you know, is a landscaper, so he has been 
has been quite busy and so tomorrow I think we're going to try to dedicate a little bit of time to that to see if we can figure out if the things that they have been asked for, the things that uh, have been asked of us, we can do. So please bear with us um, and that's what's going on with that. We still got a couple blocking boards available. We have that one and the one that's got the hearts. It's still available so if you're interested or you're wondering about that just should be an email and I'll show you something that my husband was working on mm. what is this no it's not a cigarette holder or a business card holder although that wouldn't be a bad idea but this is the first draft <clears throat> and I sent him a picture of this and it's supposed to be a um, a little where you can put all your needles metal needles like uh, sewing needles uh, upholstery needles and it, it worked but it wasn't perfect um, so I told him it needs to be a little bit deeper maybe it needs to be a little bit more compact and I'd rather have a magnet on the right side I don't know if to you it looks like it's the right side but in, to me to in in person it's on it's on the right but I want it to open towards the right, so I wanted the magnet to be on the left. So, he went to the drawing board and he created a second one. Ooh. So the second one is much, much more compact. It is a little bit thicker. And it opens up just as I want it. Towards, it opens towards the left so that, or it opens towards this way so that um, since I'm right-handed, I don't have this thing on my way when I open it. And it's just a little... For me, I don't need a pink cushion because I don't sew. <laughs> Although you can use a pink cushion for any needle. But I thought this was a little bit more compact and a little bit easier for me. We have a ma magnets in here so they stay straight. And my issue with the needles was is that I had them loose in my little notions box that I have here on my on my desk and every time I was digging for them it was always, always hard to get to my needles partially too because of my nails I'm not gonna lie but these, this is a magnet so it's pretty simple even if I can't get to it with my nails I can kinda crinkle them up and grab the one that I want and put them back and this little lid just comes off if you want it to come off if you don't, you can just move it to the side and grab, oops, sorry, and grab what you, what you want. There you go. What do you think about that, guys? Give me your feedback. A lot of these little items that he comes up with, I put them up here a lot of times so I can get your ideas. Or if you guys have um, a recommendation. Listen, I am open to constructive feedback. You may not like what I have, and that's fine. I, I respect uh, you may not like these little things or you may not think it's worth it or you may have an idea that maybe if you did it this way it would be a little bit more uh, a little bit better or more user friendly for multiple people so i'm open to constructive feedback just no ugliness because this is a very chill channel and we don't play that here so this is just for fun guys this is not uh, a serious thing this is just a craft that we love and we do because I think uh, for most of us, that is, as it is for me, it is a form of therapy. So, um, so yeah, if you, if you think this is a cool idea, let me know before we start making a bunch of these. If you think that um, it needs to be tweaked in some way, please let me know. If you think it should have some kind of... Uh, specific writing or logo or I don't know um, maybe open here slide to the side I don't know you guys tell me put in the comments what you think if we should make any tweaks or changes or um, adjustments to this little gadget give me your feedback I value your feedback I do I do I do so I did um, make a couple blankets, baby blankets. You guys know me and my baby blankets. A lot of the reasons why I do baby blankets is because once again, 
most people know a baby, most, most people are going to a baby shower, most people are, you know, it's an easy project to, to, to work up. And I tend to work with a lot of uh, um, DK and sport weight, weight yarns, so doing a huge blanket, the only one that I've ever done that is huge is this one in a, in a DK. That's a queen size blanket down here. And it was a year-long project with the challengers a few years back, a couple years back, and it was done square by square. And each month I did 12 squares. Each month I um, cleaned the edges and I attached them month by month by month until we finished the year and I had my blanket all finished and I did a border all around and I was done. And that took a lot of work. As I said, it took a year, so. And then my other one up here, this one here, which is a, uh, my blanket, my throw blanket, that was done with chunky yarn, so it didn't take nearly as long, but I don't tend to work with that kind of yarn. I chose that yarn only because it was so beautiful. I do apologize for the crinkling. This is the first blanket. And as you guys know, I usually put my blankets, I wash my blankets once they are done, and I put them in, a, in these clear bags. If you're wondering about those bags, just let me know. I get them through Amazon, and I can, I'll try to put the link if I remember down below. And this one was done with Willow Yarns. I got this yarn through Hirschner's, I believe. Yeah, I think it was Hirschner's. It is 87% cotton, 13% nylon. It is considered a size number four. It is washable and dryable, made in China. It calls for a 5.0 millimeter hook, but I believe I used a six. And the colorway on this is called Street Flare. Okay, and once again, it's called Tranquility. Each um, uh, skein has 229 yards. I'd show you a new one, but I used I used them all. And this is the blanket that I created. I know it looks a little blocky, but it's okay. It's meant to be however it turned out. And there's kind of like a line here and and from the color. You can't see it with the stitch, but you can kind of see it from the color. And that's because I turned my work. And, uh, but still, I think it's lovely. I think it's beautiful. The colorways are nice. And it's just a really cute square baby blanket. So, and that's one of them. And if there's a, a drawback to, to doing um, the squares back and forth like I do, it's I just noticed is that. And I noticed it as I was doing it, but I had already started and I wasn't about to, to switch. So the other one that I did, I had a the same yarn also, same specs. This one is called Beach House. Willow Yarns Tranquility. Size number four, 87 cotton, 13 nylon. Made in China, calls for a 5.0 crochet hook or 4.0 knitting needles if you choose to knit. And this is the other one. These have been washed. Smell nice and clean. Smell is so clean. And you see, you can kind of see again on this one the back and forth, how I work it back and forth. It's interesting to see that. But that is also something that I've learned in self-striping yarns. It's probably best not to go back and forth and just try to just keep going all the way around. So this is the beach house and this is the street flare. They're both the same size, but just this little project to kind of cleanse the palette. As you guys remember, I completed my um, MJ's Off the Hook 
uh, sweater um, that was done with a sportwear yarn. And um, you know, whenever you're working with sportwear yarn, it could be hard on your hands. So I just wanted to do something a little bit easy and also to use up some of the yarn that I have here. The next yarn I'm going to be working with is this, see if you can see it right here, a little bit of it up here. This one here, that is from uh, Joanne's. I can't remember the name of it, but that's going to be the next yarn I'm going to pull out of my stash and start working with. And then, I'm going to show you something that I did. And this was totally a a crazy idea that I had. I had a yarn, that Moya yarn, that Africa Yarns had sent me as a sample. It was a very rough, it was almost like a, it's a mercerite, it felt like a really tough mercerized cotton, almost the kind of yarn you would use for um, macrame, but much thinner. Let's see if I have a little bit, I have a little bit here that I just threw out because it's not enough to do anything with, but see if I can show you have you guys seen I'm not sure if you guys seen on Instagram these little um, videos of uh, people with a little bit of scrap and they they take the little scrap and they put it in a little pile it says I'm not a hoarder I'm not a hoarder. <laughs> and then it's like, throw that out. Throw it out. So let me roll this up really quick. It's not much. I just want you to have an idea what it looks like. So this is the yarn that I used. Let's see if I can do it this way. You see, you can kind of tell. There we go. How crinkly this is and how stiff this is. It's very stiff. It's not soft at all. It's very rough. But it is beautiful. And I was wondering what could I do with this? I was thinking possibly doing, um, it would have been a good yarn to do the keychains with. But I've done quite a few. And in fact, I gifted for Mother's Day, I gifted all my siblings and um, my, my sisters, that is, sisters-in-laws, I, I gifted them with um, with some of those. By the way, thank you, Miss Jeannie, Butterfly Dreams Crochet, for that awesome tutorial. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, I am talking about these little things right here. Miss Jeannie from Butterfly Dreams Crochet, uh, this was gifted to me, but she also made a tutorial with this. And I used her tutorial when I was actually at the hospital with my mother, and I stayed with her three days. They actually made quite a few of them and I gifted them to the nurses that uh, that that um, took care of my mother and I made so many sorry guys my glasses feel like they're dirty I made so many while I was there watching over her because you know they sleep and you're just watching TV so I kept myself busy crocheting um, crocheting um, those keychains I did not put pom pumps on mine but um, I made so many that I started gifting them not only to the nurses that took care of my mom, but also I gave some to my sisters, um, my mother-in-law for Mother's Day, and uh, some other friends of mine that I knew would enjoy them and would like them, and everybody loved them. Um, in fact, I had made my first one when we went to the beach for our, our vacation back in March. I actually, that was the first time I did Miss Jeannie's um, tutorial. And um, the first one I made, I made to a neighboring um, neighboring campers, um, a lady that we just started chatting and we just hit it off. And, and before we left, I left her with a little bit of parting gift and she was so happy and it was, she was just um, excited for the little gift. She said it was beautiful and I'm sure that she'll put her camper keys on there and uh, enjoy it so that's what crocheting is all about is uplifting people and uh, sometimes we make little things like that and um, it just brings a smile to somebody's somebody's face somebody may not be having a, a a good day and that little gift may just totally uplift them so 
think about that. Make yourself a few little things. Keep them in the car. And if you see somebody at a store who does a really good job for you or that you know, notice is feeling a little bit down, go to your car, get a little gift, take it over and say, you know what, here's a little something to bring a little smile to your face. Those are the things that, is gonna, that are going to start turning this world around. Taking a little bit of time to acknowledge those who are not being feeling their best and um, bringing a little bit of joy. So, next, what did I make? This is, like I said, I had this yarn, it was one cake, I didn't have much, and I decided, you know what, I'm going back to work, I got my day timer sheets, uh, just in case, and uh, so I ordered from Amazon the inserts, the, the refillable sheets. I had not used this day timer in over 12 years, but I had the case, and um so I just ordered um, the sheets because I had the binder. I just ordered the refillable sheets. But I was a little bored with the case and I didn't want to spend, because I don't know if you guys have checked, but if to order like a day timer or, or Franklin Covey or at a glance a binder, just a binder for these planners, it's an upwards of $50 and uh, that's not going to happen. I had a very, a very good binder that works fine. All I needed was to uplift it and this is what I did. <laughs> Mama Lama Kayla, thank you so much for the idea of hot gluing, uh, hot gluing um, crochet. This is 100% cotton. It is a very stiff cotton, so my hands were like really rough, and I was so glad once I was done crocheting this. But this is what I did. I actually crocheted a panel, and I hot glued it to the binder, to the cover. And then I took a little bit that was left and made the little cover for this and then also hot glued it. I wouldn't have been able to stitch it in because this material is just way too thick and my hands are not going to function. So it is perfectly functional. It opens up. It works perfectly well. The only thing I can imagine is that with time it may get dirty so as yours truly, you guys know me, I will probably put this bad boy in the washer and see how it fares. <laughs> Take everything out, of course, throw it in the washer in a delicate cycle, and the whole thing, cover and all, and see how it fares. This is almost like a, um, it's not a, it's, it's almost like a, um, almost like a vinyl, not really vinyl, it's almost like a material like a nylon, like a tough line, nylon. So, anyway, so this is what I did. What do you guys think? Give me your feedback. Well, this is pretty cool. My husband says, you know what? You come up with the craziest things, but you know that? That's what we do. That's what we do. So, this is my final uh, FO. What do you guys think? Give me your feedback. If you have something like this at home, maybe a wallet that you love, that you love all the way that the insides are, the way that the uh, pockets work and everything, and you don't want to get rid of it, but it already looks a little bit rough on the outside, maybe crocheting a cover for it will be your way to keep it and re continue to use it. Because this little bad boy here, this little binder, easy 15 years old, easy. No, I dare to say longer than that. Easy 18 years old. So, little pull. What do you think? And if it starts coming undone, you just simply take off the old glue and put on some new glue and put it right back. Or who knows, maybe I could even rip it off, wash it, take out all the old glue. I'm not sure that the, how that would work, but i put it right back. I don't know, but we'll figure it out once it gets to that point. But I think that was a pretty ingenious idea. Give me your thoughts. What do you think? I just love this. This is my favorite part right here. This little pool thingy. Well, it's all my favorite part. I think it looks awesome. 
anytime you can recycle reuse and not throw out it's a good thing and that's all I have for you guys tell me what do you guys think what do you guys think of my um, of my my cover my little gadget here See how it's open it. What do you think? Is it something worth doing? Is it not? Give me a feedback. And then my my little blankets, which been washed. Now I'm gonna put them back in their bag and store them up. I'll try to record a little bit of uh, my my yarn room later on. I'll put a video. I did buy a couple more crates and moved some stuff over. Not the crates, but I used these plastic containers that actually are stackable in an open way. So I don't have to unstack them to open them. I stack them like they were little cabinets. Some of you may have seen some of my videos in the past, but that's uh, what I have. And I bought a couple more because I moved some of the yarn from one area to keep it all together. And then I'm storing in that other area all my finished items, like all the blankets and everything that I have. So, so that when my kids come over or when I gift, um, I have to pull a gift. Excuse my dog. Um, pull a gift or something. I know exactly where to go and get it. I had them in a little plastic bag, but truth be told, the bag is breaking. Uh, they'll zip. It's one of those uh, blanket zipper bags and uh, it's breaking and it was starting to pop at the seams and I figured you know what let me just make some room near my yarn and I'll just stack everything up nice and neat and that's what I've done so I'll try to give you guys a tour of that at another time but thank you so much for hanging out with me again um, if you just stumbled by this channel by all means hit the subscribe button notification bell hit like, put a comment, let me know what you think of this little gadget, <clears throat> what you think of my, of my idea, of this idea, give me your feedback, let me know what you think, and, um, and as I always say, I hope that wherever you are in the world, I hope you're having a wonderful morning, noon, night, evening, from the Yarny Cave. Peace. I love you guys. God bless. And we will talk to you soon. Bye.